Hey everybody, uh, so I'm a program manager with the Windows developer platform. Uh, that means mostly we own a bunch of boring stuff like COM and WinRT and UWP. Um, but today I want to talk to you about WSL, more acronyms, um, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, so first off, uh, how many people here work on a MacBook or in Bash like as their yeah, okay, everybody, yeah. Um, I get it, I get it. Um, so second, uh, how many of you have heard of Windows subsystem for Linux or Bash on Windows? All right, and how many of you have actually tried it out? All right, cool. Got some converts. Um, so first off, uh, Bash on Windows is what it sounds like. This is literally Linux running on Windows. Um, this is, there's, there's no emulation, no VM, no fancy recompilation going on behind the scenes. This is. Uh, we download from, you know, sudo apt get install uh, whatever repository you want, and then you execute it natively against the NT kernel. So why did we do something insane like this? This sounds super not Microsoft. Um, so first off, we get that, like, the Linux command line tools are way better, uh, and they actually work um, <laughs> instead of on Windows. Like, we, we, we get that this is the case. Okay. Um, and so those are the things that we want to get working here. Um, and so this is just for developers. This is for you. Um, in particular, web dev, open source. Um, the one that we think really actually takes the cake here is cross-platform. So I can do like MS build, GCC. I get my executable and my elf binary. And I can just run them both at the same time. And everything works. And I didn't have to reboot or like SSH and SCP random crap onto a new machine and run it. So that's really fun. Um, so what do you actually do with this? First off, uh, programming languages, we don't really care. Compile it, interpret it, it works. Um, Tmux, Vim, Emacs, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but it all works. And obviously, all of your backend stuff works as well. So Apache, Redis, it, it works. Um, so that was all the stuff that we shipped back in the anniversary update. And I know none of you know like Windows ship schedules, because I don't even either. Um, but um, so we've been working on it for the last year or so, and we've added a bunch of really cool stuff. So obviously, uh, more syscalls. Uh, it just works. And networking improvements. Um, so whenever this first shipped, uh, we'd ask for a Linux socket, and the system would be like, lol, what? Uh, we don't know what that means. So it was kind of worthless for web developers, because you couldn't stand up a server. So like, why bother? Um, so that works now. Uh, file change configuration, um, IF config, like, and obviously uh, Ubuntu 16.04 came out, so we want to support that too. Uh, the one that really sold me on this, though, is like I can use this as a daily driver. Is the interop. So um, this is making uh, the Bash side of things and the Windows side of things be able to actually talk to each other in a useful way. Um, so you can see up there, like I've got ipconfig.exe being run in Bash, being piped into grep. Um, this is an unholy combination that you probably don't ever need to do. Um, but hey, we support it. And the realistic scenario here is like I can run MS Build from Bash, and it'll work. Uh, and I can like build my Visual Studio project. So uh, let's just jump into a demo, because code is way better. Um, so we've got Bash here. And I'm going to jump through a symlink into uh, the C drive. We mount the C drive um, as like a drive, so it's under mount. Um, and we're just going to launch Windows Explorer there. So I just launched Windows Explorer from Bash. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on that even I don't quite understand what happens sometimes. Um, so there we go. This is in my documents. Um, so instead, we're going to launch VS Code here as well. Um, and one of the things you'll notice is that I've taken Bash and made it the integrated console in code. So this is Bash running in a Windows binary that was launched from a Bash prompt that was, OK, yeah. Um, the important thing here is that uh, we can CD into Hello World and just do npm start. Um, that's not ours. So uh, npm start should work here. Great. And so we're going to have a web server running on localhost 3000. Um, and to give you an idea, that is very specifically being executed in Linux, running on Linux. And man, live demos. There we go. <laughs> I, I did not pray to them hard enough. Um, but if I click localhost 3000 here, oh, come on. 
today of all days, really. This worked great like an hour ago. Um, I'm already at five minutes. So um, the cool thing here, though, is that Edge would be normally able to connect to the server if it ever booted. Um, so there we go. Uh, this works. And the other thing I talked about was file change configuration. So um, we hit Save here. It compiles again um, because it the Linux subsystem noticed a file was changed by a Windows binary that it was in the Windows file system and automatically recompiled everything. And the WebSocket connection that we had running in our web page uh, noticed this connection and rebooted. So this is Nodemon running in browser, uh, browser refresh running. Um, there's a bunch of other cool stuff going on here that you can find out about um, by testing it, filing bugs on us, and checking out some documents. Uh, Vanessa will be sending out these slides at the end. Um, Sorry that the demo took a little while longer. But thank you very much. And I'll be in the back later if you want to try to break this. Uh, please do. Or just talk some more about it. So hey, there we go. <laughs> thank you.